I think it's telling that the only time I've really found Payday 3 difficult was during the behind closed doors press beta back in June of last year. Obviously it was one of the first times I'd played the game and without any real knowledge of the weapons, skills or heist, I had this lightning in a bottle experience whilst playing with Mariner Top Hat that I've been chasing ever since. It might have just been the novelty of it all, but it led to me and many others at the event proclaiming that Payday 3 would have that trademark difficulty the franchise has been known for once more. Just look at the damn Overkill description. Cut forward to Early Access launch, we'd conquered Overkill, the hardest difficulty within 12 hours of the game going live. A couple of weeks on and we were using that hardest difficulty as a farming ground for racking up kills to work through those obnoxious weapon challenges. And months on, it's the only difficulty I ever play because everything else is simply too easy. And now as of update 5, even that's a joke. A few key changes have made our heisters virtually indestructible and our arsenal of weapons extremely overpowered. Payday 3 might now be in the most trivial state of difficulty the franchise has ever seen, with only Launch Grinder and maybe Leech even coming close in terms of their meta warping power. As I mentioned in my update video, the power fantasy is now kinda there. I mean you have to play the game in a fairly janky and unintended way to achieve it, so it's obviously not intentional, but you will feel almost unassailable whilst doing so, which has its charms, but is definitely not sustainable for the health of the game with mods already out there to revert some of the more mind-boggling changes. Not to mention they gave us 7 more skill points to make any aspirational build possible. Today's video is going to run you through exactly what's broken about heister builds now, how you can abuse these skill changes and additions to their absolute limits to create the best build in the game, and embarrass whoever's in charge of trying to balance things as there's no way in hell half of these additions should have made it through testing. In my eyes, there are three core skills that have received changes or buffs that are really upsetting the entire balance of the game, alongside the obvious elephant in the room of Adrenaline, which is just such a low-risk playstyle now, I see no reason to deviate from it. First up, most universally, Clean Slate. This allows you to replenish your first armor plate with armor repair kits, giving you a theoretically endless supply of armor, bearing in mind dozers and eventually techies will drop these kits upon death. We can also easily trade sieves for multiple copies of these kits throughout the heist, and with the most recent manipulator buffs, this supply of armor might as well be endless. Clean Slate is a massive build enabler, sitting in the tank mastery slot, meaning all playstyles have free access to it, buffing one or two play armor types, making those heavier options are virtually redundant, as it's simply easier to keep topping up your standard lining over and over again with kits off the floor than it is to guzzle your way through armor bag deployables. There's no drawback to this skill, so it's pretty much excellent in all situations. In my opinion, it's stronger than the old version of Armor Up that allowed you to get two plates for the price of one at launch, which was ironically nerfed. Alongside the adrenaline mechanic and fortitude, the new skill line and health focus playstyle which leans into running one plate armor anyway, you'll never find yourself starved of resources and with the game deriving virtually all of its difficulty from that scaling attrition concept with limitless health and armor, you're never really going to feel challenged. I do think Adrenaline is its own can of worms, as a single nerf could make it pretty much an unusable gimmick, with everyone flooding back to pure armor builds in a heartbeat. But my bit of armchair balancing, for what it's worth, would be to either focus on it as a more pervasive skill, such that Adrenaline sticks with you more permanently, but doesn't absorb 100% of incoming damage first, or make it more fleeting, so that Adrenaline spikes are more powerful, but much shorter lived. Think something along the lines of the Kingpin Injector from Payday 2. The problem now is that it's sort of the best of both worlds, eating up all damage for quite a long time, which means there's no real skill expression in how it's utilized. Anyway, balance is not the main topic of this video, I want to focus on imbalance and how we can really take the piss with it. So moving on to more aggressive overpowered skills, the second one that received key changes was Cutting Shot. As usual, the details of this change were hidden behind closed doors, so we were left to crunch the numbers ourselves, but basically all we were told is that the cutting shot weapon penetration multiplier was being changed to assist lower base pen weapons. That sounded fine on paper, as we know that in the past, the higher a weapon's penetration stat, usually the better it performs unless it's specifically a shotgun. But it turns out that was actually for a reason, as now three more weapons hit that all important one shot kill threshold and have benefit massively from this change. The KE-59, CAR-4 and SP Model 11 all now do so and have shot up their respective tier lists as a result. I mean, the AK was never a slouch, but now it's up there as one of the top three weapons in the game. It's absolutely mind-blowing to me how these weapons, which generally didn't need buffs, have ended up so much stronger after the update. But quietly, I believe even more so than the other two skill changes, even though its application is niche, the precision shot buff is insane. 
Now it simply needs Edge to be active to gain its massive damage multiplier, which is proportional to the zoom of your scope, also penetrating a second target in addition to that extra damage. Now, the huge caveat here is that it only works on 5 and 6 times magnifying scopes, which can only be equipped by marksman rifles such as the R900S and SAA144, but what it does to the SA is simply mind-boggling design. With just the 5 times zoom fluted marksman scope equipped, you will deal enough damage to one-shot every standard unit in the game in the body and to 5-shot a dozer through the faceplate. It's genuinely ridiculous how strong this thing is now, turning Payday 3 into a shooting gallery, reaching a point on Golden Shark when in a team where there just weren't enough cops to go around as we turned Overkill into a snooze fest of a difficulty. Again, it's limited and that only a couple of weapons are impacted by the change, but what it's done to the already overpowered SA is downright nasty and has to be seen to be believed. Here's the build I'm running to break the update 5 meta at this stage. We run the SAA144 modified for excellent handling and scope speed alongside the Castigo which we'll never need to pull out. Medit bags are the deployable of choice after those recent buffs and the standard lining is our best bet for building into adrenaline with 5 total downs. Flashbangs in the motion sensor alongside the Mark and Mamba because to be frank we don't need a dozer killing overkill weapon when the SA is everything I've ever needed round off the build. As for the skills we start with the Medic, steady hands, extra charge and triage to buff our Medit bags. Mower into ammo funnel and replenish so ammo is never a concern, clean slate to keep topping up the standard lining, alongside sharpshooter aced, long shot, precision shot and cutting shot to completely break my SA when scoped in. Enforcer into combat reload allows us to reset grit and edge whenever we need to, whilst manipulator and negotiator is all you need for a solid hostage training setup. Remember if you're running this online with friends, only one of you needs to bring hostage skills. Further down the lines we grab Transporter, Beast of Burden, Deep Pockets and Power Lifter, finishing up with Fortitude Aced, Unyielding, Super Physiological, Walking Tall, Pain Asymbolia and Stockpile, just missing out on Health Siphon which I don't think is necessary especially for solo players which is 99% of us without a server browser. With a full 28 point build you'll have access to 2 medit bags with 6 charges each, an unstoppable powerhouse of a weapon that fares well against all enemy types and a self sustaining health and armor setup that utilizes easily replenishable resources to stay afloat. At this point the game really plays itself for you so there are hardly any tips I can give besides reminding you to scope in on the SA for the damage boost and try not to get a headache in the process as scoping in and out can get a little disorientating. Even if you end up lying down for a while after using this though, you'll probably still survive the assault wave with the insane protection Fortitude offers. Genuinely, I feel like it's even easier to stay alive like this than it was with the incredible regen of Launch Grinder, at least then you had to deal consistent damage. In Payday 3, all you have to do is interact with medit bags on the floor for your near immortality. Even the dreaded fall damage won't be enough to get you as it's calculated off expected heist to health which is set to 100 meaning you can break both your legs falling from the roof of the bank and still carry on with the heist. Rocking adrenaline is honestly like wearing Guts' berserker armor. So whilst this is fun and I do recommend you give it a go yourselves, it's probably not healthy for the overall state of the game. Starbreeze seems to have operated by the balancing principle of if everything's overpowered, nothing's overpowered, which is a really slippery slope of power creep when they intend to add more weapons to the game in the future. That doesn't mean that this isn't a fun build of the game to play around with, but I worry it won't be sustainable. The fact that I can now complete my first solo overkill challenge run with ease whilst playing aggressively is a bit of a giveaway that some things might not be as balanced as intended. Not that I think it was in a great place then as the corner hiding strats were even cheesier than this, but evidently the scope of the difficulty leap is a bit extreme. At the same time, now many of us have had a taste of that power fantasy, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to go back and slow things down to the crawl that was launch payday 3 gameplay. I still want to be able to make those fast paced aggressive plays, I just want there to be some risk and reward to it which is only really possible if the cops get smarter and start to punish us for it. The best way in my eyes to balance these recent changes has to be to give cops equivalent buffs, starting with their AI and reactiveness as let's be honest, the AI strategy patterns are already a bit old and predictable. If the SWATs gain new methods of countering our aggression and hindering our access to resources, suddenly we'll have to think more about how we approach certain situations instead of being able to switch off our brains even on the supposed highest difficulty. That's what checks and balances are all about in these co-op action games, so I do believe most of the additions can work in the long term, we just need to be up against worthy opposition. Although I will concede that some skills probably do need toning down, I'm not sure I should be getting away with one shot kills on shields by clipping them in the big toe. Anyway, 
I don't think health booths are in order, and I don't think the game needs to immediately devolve into a full-on horde shooter, but with how short and repetitive heists are, we've sort of solved Payday 3 for the time being, which is part of the reason why so few people are still playing the game. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, I hope you can get some fun out of the build. Remember to follow the link down in the description to check out Apex Gaming PCs, my range just had a sizable price drop making them much more affordable. Let me know what you think of the video in the comments, and chime in on whether the update was enough to draw you back in to boot up Payday 3, or is it just not enough without new substantial content like weapons, heists, and even heisters arriving alongside it. Hopefully we'll get something more along these lines very soon. Take care, see you in the next one. A huge thank you to my dedicated Patreon backers. If you want to join this crew in Going Infamous, check out the link below and pledge as little as $2 to see your name in the credits, or get 24 hour early access to future videos and vote on upcoming content. Take care, I'll see you all soon.